This video is brought to you by Cloudways. As developers, we should always be striving to learn new methods to reduce the number of bugs in our code. Some methods require us to completely re-architect our code, but sometimes there are those hidden gems that we can quickly add to our code base that will immediately help us and require just a little effort to get started. For example, you might have a function to create a user. Notice that we're using type parameters. I love them because they help reduce errors and they help our IDE help us. Then in a separate file, we can call the function. Unfortunately, we made a mistake. Did you see the error? We switched the parameters and the email is invalid. Even though we use type parameters, there's no way to prevent this. Or is there? In this video, we'll discuss how you can use value objects to write code that is less error prone, more expressive, and easier to maintain. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published, and make sure you follow me at Scott Keck Warren on Twitter for all kinds of great PHP content. What are value objects. At a very high level, value objects are used to represent typed values that have no conceptual identity of objects inside of our domain. A value object wraps data and is distinguishable only by its properties. So two value objects with the same properties are considered equal. Examples of potential value objects include email addresses, phone numbers, addresses, and prices. Value objects were introduced in domain-driven design or DDD for short. DDD is a software design approach to design complex application domains based on input from domain experts. We'll cover this in a future video, but thankfully we can use value objects anywhere, even without using the rest of DDD. When designing value objects, there are three main characteristics. The first is structural equality, then immutability, and finally self-validation. Let's break those down. Structural equality. A value object differs from an entity in that it does not have a concept of identity. There's so there's no ID column for us to compare. Value objects are instead defined by their attributes, and they are considered equal if their attributes are equal. Thus, they're structurally equal. For example, if we consider a time span as a value object, then a duration of 60 minutes would be the same thing as a duration of one hour, since the underlying value is the same. Immutability. An immutable object is an object whose state cannot be modified after it's been created. This means that when we're creating a value object, it will always be equal to an equivalent value object. This reduces bugs because a value won't change during the request, especially with multiple threads of execution. PHP 8.1 provides support for this by using the read-only property on our attributes. PHP 8.2 is going to be adding support for read-only classes, which will help us design these. Check out our video for what's new in PHP 8.2 to know more. If you're working in a pre-8.1 world, when you're implementing a value object, you just want to not create a setter to prevent external changes. Self-validation. A value object must verify the validity of its attributes when it's being created. If any of its attributes are invalid, then an exception should be raised. For example, in our time span example, we can have negative time spans. So we will throw an exception in PHP to indicate that, that that validation has failed. Now as a quick recap for this section, when we're designing value objects, we're looking at three main characteristics, structural equality, immutability, and self-validation. We appreciate our sponsors because they make this episode possible. Now, we all love to write code, but managing the servers that that code runs on can be a time-consuming and error-prone process. Think how often you've seen reports of accidental AWS bills in the tens of thousands of dollars. Cloudways offers peace of mind and flexibility so you can focus on growing your business instead of dealing with server management. With Cloudways, you get an optimized stack, managed servers, backups, staging environments, integrated Git, pre-configured Composer, 24-7 support, and a choice of five cloud providers, AWS, DigitalOcean, Linode, Google Cloud, and Vulture. Now, I'm one of those developers who has tons of ideas for side projects, but a lot of them stop at the idea phase after I realize I would have to maintain another server. Cloudways takes control of all of that, so I don't have to. I just pick a Laravel project, and then I can focus on writing the code. 
code until I come up with another side project that distracts. Get a discount of 20% for three months by using our code PHPARCH. That's P-H-P-A-R-C-H. Or you can go there today by going to phparch.com slash cloudways. Thank you, Cloudways, for making this possible. Benefits. There are numerous benefits to using value objects. The first is cleaner code. Value objects are useful for writing clean code because instead of writing a function that requires a string, we can very clearly write a function that requires a phone number class. This makes it easier to read and easier to reason about. And also, we don't need to figure out which phone format we should use. Should it be dashes or parentheses or nothing? Value objects take care of all of that. We also get to reduce the function parameters. By using value objects, we can easily replace multiple parameters with just a single one. For example, if we have an amount and a currency, we can just make a price. We also get better type safety. I love including types in function declarations because it makes it harder for me to shoot myself in the foot. Value objects increase type safety by distinguishing between different types of values. For example, in our create function, everything was string, so it's easier to swap. Having value objects prevents those swaps. We also get some duplicate code reduction. Because we're passing around extendable classes and not basic types, we can very easily add helper functions to those classes. This allows us to put all of our common logic inside of our value object classes. For example, we might have an isEqual function that compares two value objects. So in a price example, we might be comparing two things. And by using an isEqual function, we just have one parameter that we call. And if we need to add any more additional logic to handle our value types, it can be just added in a single place. Warnings. Now, of course, like everything in life, you should not abuse virtual objects. It's possible with value objects that the number of classes that we have to support increases significantly as we do this more and more. We also might run into some small performance issues related to converting per primitives va values back and forth between objects. Most of the time, these aren't a huge issue, but it's definitely something to be aware of. Example, let's build an age value object class as an example. We're going to start with a basic class structure with a constructor and a property. We're using 8.1, so we can use the read-only property. This makes sure our class is immutable. Now, the first requirement is that our age is between 0 and 150. We do so with two exceptions that we raise, and this adds the self-validation. Next, we're going to add logic to, that will allow us to compare two ages using an isEqual function. And this adds our structural equality requirement. What happens if we want to modify the age? So, for example, we might want to add a year as somebody has a birthday. Notice that we're not modifying the property directly, and instead we're creating a whole new version of our age class. This keeps that immutability. What you need to know, value objects are a powerful tool in the programmer's toolbox. They allow us to reduce bugs and improve readability, and you can get started on it today. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics you would like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below, or send me a message on Twitter, at Warren. We would love to hear how we can help you, and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.